Okay, I have a royal miracle to share with you today. So as you can see, I have all of the face cards and I have them paired up according to their companions. So for instance, I have the two black jacks, the two black kings, the two red queens, and so forth. Okay, now you can pick these up in whatever order the spectator would like. Uh, it, it actually doesn't matter. Okay, and uh, turn the cards face down. Good idea. And then from here, you're going to perform what's called a mange, over, under, or under, over. And you can even give the spectator that choice. So if they want an over, under, this is how it works. You go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Okay, now from here, uh, I'm speaking to you as the performer. You can perform as many left-right shuffles as you like with random stacking, okay? Also, you can offer to the spectator to do as many feral shuffles as they like. So this is where you break the cards exactly in half and then you just perfectly interlace them. That's called a pharaoh shuffle. You don't have to do this, but you could. The other shuffle that you can perform as many of as the spectator asks for is an even up jog, okay? So this is where you jog forward the even position cards, random stack according to the spectator's request, okay? So you can do a left, right, a pharaoh, or an up jog. Okay, and you can do as many of those as you like. That's the key. <laughs> That's the amazing thing. You truly can, okay? Now, at this point, what you do is you have the spectator randomly choose the top card of either packet, okay? So maybe they'll choose this one right here, and I'm gonna set it aside over here, okay? Now, what you need to do is you can either do this entire performance in which you decide kind of how to stack these, Okay, so for example, let me just point out we have six cards here and five here because we just took one. If you stack the larger pile on top of the smaller, then at the end of what we'll do next, you'll want the top card as the one to set next to this one. Okay, so you're kind of hoping that these match. These are companion cards. If for whatever reason, the spectator insists on having the smaller packet, here five versus six, put on top like that. Then after what I'll do next, you'll want to take the bottom card instead, okay? So the mnemonic that I came up with, which may get me into trouble, I suppose, is just think of a Barbie, big top, small bottom, big top, small bottom okay so so for example if we put the big pile on top then at the end we're going to go with the top card okay so um, i put the big on top of the small now in either case the next action is to perform a klondike shuffle like this okay so the card you're going to now set down here is going to be the new top card okay so that's going to be kind of your, hmm, I think those just feel like they go together kind of thing, okay? And then you perform the same actions, a mange over, under, or under, over, okay? And then you can perform as many left, right shuffles as the spectator calls for with random stacking decided by them. You can do as many feral shuffles as you like, and this is where you're um, interlacing them perfectly. That's all you're doing. Okay, so interlace those, or you can do as many even or odd up jogs as you would like or the spectator calls for with random stacking here. Okay, and then we'll deal out into two piles yet again. Have the spectator choose either top card. It really is a free choice. Maybe they'll choose this one here. Okay. We'll set it there. And then if you're giving the spectator the choice in stacking these and they decide to go with the smaller pile on top of the bigger, let me just show you what you do in that case. The Klondike shuffle is done just as before. That's done in both cases, okay? Now, what did I say? 
big top, small bottom. Okay, so we put the small pile on top of the big pile. So now we go with the bottom card as our kind of prediction card. Okay, and then you just um, repeat, right? Mon shuffle, uh, left, right shuffle as many times as the spectator would like with random stacking. Why don't we just do a second one? Since I haven't done multiple ones yet. Maybe they'll want right on left again. And then, of course, you can do a feral shuffle, one or ten of them if you like. Or you can do an even up jog if you like, as many of those. Okay. Um, so why don't we uh, not do all of those? <laughs> and we'll, so we'll go right into the left right dealing in which the spectator chooses either top card. Maybe they'll choose this one here. Okay. Now remember, this is the small one, this is the big one. If the spectator wants the big one on top, we're going to reveal the top card in just a moment after our Klondike shuffle. Okay, so we do a Klondike shuffle in both cases, no difference there. Top card now gets set next to that one. A mange again, an over, under, under, over. You can do as many left, right shuffles with random stacking or feral shuffles or up jogs. Okay, maybe we'll just deal out the cards again to, for the spectator to choose either top card. Maybe they choose this one. Uh, maybe now we want the bigger pile, three versus two, on top. Well, we know we're going to take the top card in just a moment. Okay, so you Klondike shuffle, go with the top card. Okay, Mon shuffle one more time, then left, right shuffle. Kind of going off the screen almost. And uh, maybe right on left. Uh, we can even do, it's kind of silly, we can even do a feral, I suppose. Okay. And then left, right, again. Spectator chooses either one. Maybe they want the top one here. That's just fine. Let me move those over. Uh, maybe they want the smaller pile, which has just one on top. So since it's smaller, we're going to go with the bottom card in just a moment after the Klondike Shuffle, which is what we've done. So we go with the bottom card there. And then the next two are just set down. There's only two left, okay? And then what you can do for the reveal is you can go ahead and show these, okay, like this, and say, oh, wow, that is a very, very good sign. <laughs> <laughs> that we've accomplished something highly unlikely. Because if you notice here, there's no repeat face cards of the same color. Okay? But the key is, what are the cards above that you freely chose? Remember, you had a choice between choosing the top card of either the left pile or the right pile. That was a free choice. So let's see how your first selection came out. Oh, yes, we, we nailed it. What about your second random selection? Oh, we nailed it again. What about your third? Oh, <laughs> perfect. What about your fourth? Yes, black queens. What about your fifth selection? Yes. And then the final two indeed match up as companion cards. Wow, you are an amazing choice maker. If you had chosen a different top card, this would not have worked out, okay? Now, of course, that's a fib. <laughs> you know better because of the underlying mathematics, okay? So this will work for you every time, okay? So just to recap, in fact, let me just give you a suggestion to see what's going on. So what you can do is go ahead and set up um, an ordered, more of an orderly packet. So these could be like red aces, um, in fact they can all be red I suppose, red aces, red twos, red threes, fours, fives, and six. Okay, so you have card values one through six matched up with, the, with their companion cards. And then go through everything that I did, okay? And so what we'll do is we'll just run through one, one stage of it. Okay, so from here, what did I do? I did a mange over, under, or under, over. It actually doesn't matter. Both will work. What did I do from here? I did as many left, right shuffles 
as the spectator calls for with random stacking. Maybe they want right on left. You can also do as many feral shuffles, and you can also do as many even or odd up jogs with random stacking of those two halves. Okay, and once you've done enough of those to convince the spectator that boy, uh, their choices certainly have put the cards in an unknown state, which in some ways is true actually. The thing that's not true is their structure here that you're taking advantage of as the performer. Okay, so I, I don't know like what the top cards are. I, I just don't. Okay, now there they are. Okay, now we do. Uh, but we wouldn't know that, okay? But it doesn't matter because we're looking at the mathematical structure of what's going on. From here, what did we do? Well, we had them choose either one. So you set it aside. Now there's two possibilities. They either put the big pile on top of the small one or the small one on top of the big one. Okay, so what did I say? Big top, small bottom. Okay, so if they put the big one on top and you Klondike shuffle, go with the top card as your quote matching card. If they put the small one on top and you Klondike shuffle, go with the bottom card as your predicted card pairing for this one. Okay, so for example, if they indeed go smaller on the bigger, okay, this, the next action's always the same. Klondike shuffle the cards, but because they put the smaller one on top, we go with the bottom card as our prediction. Okay, so anyway, I think, so if you work through this with ace through six and do all of it face up, that's the key for yourself to see what's going on and why it's working, do the entire thing that I've shown you face up and you'll start to get a sense of, okay, so we started with what's called an AMP packet, adjacent mirrored pairs. That's where you have the companion cards matched up. We then did a mange shuffle, which turns it into a mirrored packet. Once it's mirrored, you have the stay stack principle, which allows you to mix it in many, many different ways. But in particular, you can perform as many left-right shuffles, feral shuffles, or even or odd up jogs. When you're done with that, just do a left-right deal. Give the spectator the choice to take the top card from either of the two piles. Set that aside. And then depending on whether the bigger pile is set on top of the smaller one, that will decide whether you go with the top card after the Klondike Shuffle in a moment or the bottom card, okay? So you would perform the Klondike Shuffle and then depending on how you stack those piles, you'll set down the top card as your kind of matching card, hopefully, or the bottom card. If you happen to have put the smaller pile on top, you grab the bottom from here and put it here. So I encourage you to do this actually with an ordered packet, as I mentioned, with the cards face up, and you'll just see the magic happen in your hands, and it's all mathematical in nature, and it's relying on principles taught on the absolute math magic channel. Okay, so look for other videos. And in particular, you may want to look at the improv math card magic series uh, because it teaches you a lot about AMP structures, mirrored structures, and two cycles. So anyway, thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the absolute math magic channel.